So now you've been practicing, you've been do doing a little bit of uh, gram to mole, mole to gram conversion. So let's throw in Avogadro's number. Is that that's that 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd that we did way back in the beginning that we saw the little podcast for. So um, anytime you set up any of these problems, it it doesn't change really what you're doing. Remember that um, no matter what, you always want to get into a term of mole because we know that one mole of any substance is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules. Now, how do I know which unit I'm dealing with? Well, it's actually pretty simple, and you just have to keep this in mind as you're doing it. If you are dealing with just an element, a single element, anything from the periodic table, you're going to be dealing with atoms. So if you talk about carbons or hydrogens or irons or calciums or anything like that, then it's always going to be atoms. But if you're dealing with a compound, so a, a substance that's composed of two or more atoms, then, I'm sorry, two or more elements, then you're dealing with a compound, and that's where the units of compound are going to come in, uh, molecules are going to come into play. So, for example, one mole of sodium chloride is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sodium chloride. M molecules. But if we dealt with one mole of sodium, then it'd be one mole of sodium is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. So let's do a little conversion. You'll notice that this starts the same. Again, any mathematical problem, the first thing you do is write down what you're given. 0.25 moles of sulfur. Now, sulfur is an element. I'm going to look at the periodic table. So I know that one mole of sulfur is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sulfur. Now, notice in this problem, even though I was dealing with something from the periodic table, I didn't actually use any information from the periodic table other than the fact that, hey, sulfur is an element on the periodic table. So you don't have to bring in grams when you deal with atom and molecule mole conversions. So now I just multiply. I take my, out my handy dandy calculator, and I say, okay, 0.25. Oops, I didn't get the decimal. 0.25 times. Now, this is going to be very important. I'm going to go 6.02. Now, I want you to watch this. I can go and use the times 10 to the 23rd thing. Like, actually hit the times and put it in like this. Times 10 carat 23. Okay? But I don't want to do that because that is going to cause issues for me down the road. So I want to delete all that. Delete. Delete. I don't know why it's not deleting that exported for me. Go away, Mr. Exponent. There we go. Okay, so 6.02. Now, I want to show you something. If you hit second and the button, the comma button, or the button above the 7, you get this E function. E stands for times 10 to the. Now, don't be mistaken from natural, the inverse of the natural log E. That's a little script. E. That's a lowercase e. This is a capital E. It means times 10. And then I just plug in my exponent, 23, and shablamo, I get my number of 1.505 times 10 to the 23rd. I only need two sig figs here, so it's going to be 1.5 times 10 to the 23rd. Third, atoms of sulfur. Now, good rule of thumb, something like that red warning light that needs to go off in the back of your head. You are molecules and atoms will be a very large number. So there had better be scientific notation on the end of your number, a times 10 to the something when you're doing these problems. I notice always people are doing homework problems and they hand me a number of molecules and it says 9.7. And I'm like 9.7 times 10 to the what? And they're like, oh. So make sure you look at your calculator carefully. Some of the calculators hide the times 10 to the part on the far right side and you really have to look closely for it. So here are two more examples, and again, what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video, do them yourself, and come back and watch what I'm doing. So now, I'm going to convert from moles to molecules of silver nitrate. Again, you're write down your given first. First thing you do is write down your given. I know that one mole of any substance is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of silver nitrate. So, I go to my handy-dandy calculator, and I say, okay, Mr. Calculator, 1.44 times 6.02 times 10 to the 
second comma e23 is 8.67 times 10 to the 23rd. Again, molecules of silver nitrate. Box it. So Mr. Seekland can find it easily on your homework. It says, how many moles are there in 9.11 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of methane? So again, I write down my given. Now, because I started with molecules, molecules have to go on the bottom of my conversion. And one mole is going to go on the top. So this is where the 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd will come into play, wherever the molecule is. Now, this is where I'm telling you that that E function is going to become huge for you. So, if I do, and I'm going to show it to you both ways. I'm going to show it to you the wrong way first. So I'm going to go times 10, do the 0, thank you, 10 to the 23rd times, I'm sorry, it's underneath, so I have to divide by 6.0, it is having issues today, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And I get 1.51 times 10 to the 46th. OK. Now I'm going to do it. That was the wrong way to punch it into the calculator. Now I'm going to do it the way I'm telling you to do it. And you're going to see immediately what the answer is going to be, how different the answer is going to be. one point five one that's it one point five one huge difference and the reason for it is uh, the top calculation what it does is it takes the nine point one one times it by ten to the twenty third divides it by six point oh two and then multiplies that answer by ten to the twenty third that's why the numbers end up so drastically different from each other so uh, it's just one point five one is the final answer and that makes sense because if you think about it Moles is a bigger unit, so it should be a smaller actual number, like physical number on the page. So, because moles contains a lot more stuff. It's like, how many dozen do I have if I have 46 eggs? Well, dozen contains a lot more than the actual eggs are, so therefore the number gets smaller. So, keep that in mind as you're doing these problems. You have to double check in your head, does my answer make sense? In the next section, on the next podcast, I'm going to show you how to go multi-step at one time. Go all the way from grams to atoms or molecules, or from atoms and molecules all the way to grams.